Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, today we're still not doing the um, OpenStack Cloud installation because realistically speaking, I am kind of stuck on uh, something that I need to figure out. But once that uh, is all resolved, I am pretty close to resolving the whole thing and making a very complete uh, guide to the whole thing, which will continue to be spread over several videos um, because of just how lengthy and uh, detailed the whole thing is that I'm uh, putting together. Today's video, however, uh, the subject is going to be uh, remote monitoring and management. Um, you guys probably know this better as other men. Before we begin, however, I want to thank each and every one of you, uh, the viewers, for being a sponsor. Um, I want you to know that uh, e everything that you guys do in terms of um, interaction with videos, whether it's commenting, liking, disliking, subscribing, um, putting in your two cents, it helps my channel grow. And for that, I want to say that I am eternally grateful for you. To you, sorry, my apologies. <clears throat> Back to the subject of the uh, of the video. The primary requirement is going to be a active domain, or sorry, a setup active domain with DNS server and a separate uh, virtual machine or a separate bare metal, whatever you want to have um, in Ubuntu server twenty two point zero four. Uh, the reason why I'm stating twenty two point zero four specifically is I have tried uh to make it work with debian the core version however i keep running into issues and i haven't been able to make it work flawlessly the same way that it works on ubuntu so for that uh i'll probably make a follow-up video with um with it potentially running on debian but that is out of mind and out of sight right now um so we are going to only focus on Ubuntu. Um, the next thing that I kind of wanted to mention is um, the version of the RMM that I have chosen so far. I have chosen uh, to work with Tactical. Uh, Tactical because it, resp uh, sorry, it answers to all the requirements that I have for an RMM tool. Number one, free. Number two, open source. And number three, locally hosted. Uh, it, so far, it really is the only one that uh, responds to all three requirements. I have looked into um, Panda FMS. Uh, Panda FMS has a limit of, I believe, 100 hosts. I have looked into Action 1. Action 1 is, again, for the most part free, but it is free for 100 hosts. Not that it really matters in a home environment, uh, but if, if I am going to... Um, be hard on requirements i would like it to be like all all or nothing type of deal um also one more thing about action one is that it's uh it is cloud hosted it's not uh on premise uh possible to it's not possible to host it on premise and the last one that i was thinking about is ninja rmm as well uh, however with ninja being as awesome as it is it is number one not free and number two it is cloud hosted so for the purpose of this video it is just not response uh, responding to all the requirements that um i have for this so this is why i am kind of stuck with um tactical rmm and uh we are going to continue we're going to get it set up for what it is my opinion, because I already have a um, instance of it set up and working, and from what it is, I really like it. I it, it for a small environment, or if you're running a nonprofit, or you're just wanting to um, get your get your toes wet into the subject, it is a fantastic solution. There was a long, I don't want to say a long time ago. And I'm going to get political for just a second, but there was a lot of controversy uh, behind Tactical RMM. Uh, a lot of rumors that they ended up putting um, uh, crypto miners in their agents. 
I don't know how true that is. I personally never experienced it. However, it is possible that I I could have not gotten deep enough into uh, uh, probably discovering that option. It is possible that it is true. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like I'm completely exonerating them. But I do not have the necessary experience to tell you guys, yes, it was 100% true or no, it was 100% false. I would highly suggest do your own bit of research and decide if whether or not you want to uh, trust this open source project. However, if you have made it so far, that means that you do trust it. So let's go ahead and uh, start getting set up with the RMM project. Uh, step one, what I want um, to do is I want to open up the, uh, the, guide that's the guide that is readily available on uh, Tactical RMM's uh, website. And we are going to be following their installation process. It's not very difficult. Uh, however, and there's a couple of caveats that I will talk about during the process. It, it can work. It, it can work. There are a couple of things that you might want to pay attention to as uh, somebody who's deploying it in their own domain. In to, uh, to a user's personal preference, I would highly suggest have a domain ready. And if you do, fantastic. If you don't, it could, it could mean that you are going to have to do a little bit of run around trying to trick the installer into making believe that uh, you can make it work. So before we begin, let's set up the uh, three subdomains that are required. What I am going to do that's the, the reason why uh, you need to have a um, up and running Active, Direct, Active Directory domain controller with the DNS server is that so when once you sign into it, you can uh, you can set it up. Now I have already set it up. This is the the one that I currently run and it's working fine there and uh, for that specific reason I have set up a second uh, second version of those three subdomains. And that's how we're going to run it. We're going to run it under API, Mesh, and RMM2, respectively. And they're all pointing to this one IP. So once you have set up those three, <clears throat> sorry, once you have set up those three subdomains, let's go ahead and connect to our Ubuntu server and run the setup script 92.168.1.174. Now, in a perfect world, and obviously best practices, you are advised to create a user specifically for tactical. Because I am only making this video for demonstrative purposes, we're not really going to bother with uh, setting up a user or creating a, any firewall rules. Uh, but if you are deploying this into an environment where uh, access restriction is going to be necessary, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you uh, practice or, or sorry that you perform best practices uh, whenever you're going to be deploying that however in our closed environment none of that is going to matter so as you guys can see i am running ubuntu 22.04 the latest available long-term support from uh, canonical's website and it has already been updated to the latest available uh, releases of everything and uh, I have also installed uh, OpenVM tool. So let's copy the uh, install command. And again, we are not going to be running this as sudo. We're just going to be using uh, the local user that's on the uh, server. Now, it's going to ask us for subdomains for the backend. As you guys remember, just a couple of minutes ago, we set up the three subdomains. In this case, it's api.data.services is going to be the first one. Second one is rmm.hawkdata.services. 
And the last one for Mesh Central is Mesh Do Health Data Services. The root domain is whatever you guys have. So in my case, it's health data that services and an email. I'm just going to set it up as nowebthank.com. And it's going to go through its process. Depending on whether or not this becomes too long, I can just potentially um skip some of these um silence uh parts but at the same time uh you know what I, I won't delete the silence parts because i want you guys to monitor this in real time as close to as possible so you are now greeted with a wild wild card uh wild card certificate and you are told to provide this dns text record into your domain there's two ways of doing it depending on how you want to approach it. Here is where it becomes kind of tricky. It's you cannot get this Acme challenge to resolve into your local DNS server because then it's going to be really easy to um, impersonate other domains. So this is where you actually need your own domain. Uh, let me go ahead and Put this Acme challenge into my uh, in, into my DNS, and uh, we are going to continue. So I'll just be a second. Okay, so it's been inputted, and we're just gonna give it a solid five ten seconds. Once that's done, it'll validate our domain, and then we will be continuing the setup. One, two, three. Let's go. And there you go. So. Now this is the part of the setup that's really, really long. It doesn't require any more input until it's complete. It should take a solid five minutes. So we'll be right back. If you start seeing your installer spew these long lines, don't worry. It just means that everything is still working the way it should. At the end of setup, you're going to be prompted to create a user that's going to be uh, logging in as the administrative user for Tactical RMM. Um, you can essentially put it to be the same user credentials as your server login. However, I would highly advise against that, especially if you're putting it into an environment where uh, it's production or you have any kind of data that's um, important to you. So ju just to prevent unauthorized access. So in, in my case, I'm just I'm still going to put it as EGSC and the password is just going to be PSS123 exclamation point. PSS123 exclamation point. And then super user would be uh, created successfully. So we're almost at the uh, final stages of, of the installer. And uh, the beautiful thing that I find is that it will prompt you to uh, set up multi-factor authentication. So we're just going to go do that real quick. Oh boy. Okay. Now oh, that's fine. And then we are going to, as soon as you are done enrolling it into your uh, device, just go ahead and click on enter. Uh oh, I think we might have messed up the uh... fairly sure that I didn't. But uh, let's go back up and see just got to go back up to the domains oh no oh boy okay we're gonna we're gonna find out i think i might have done a small oopsie
We're going to find out in a couple of minutes. Yes. Okay, so I did do an, a small oopsie with uh, DNS. However, just this is going to be me. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to reload my working uh, environment because basically once you're at this end, you can access it via the uh, RMM domain uh, DNS address that you gave it and you should be good to go. I knew it. I did do a small DNS uh, mistake, but that's okay. Uh, essentially, once your install is done and completed, because you inputted those three entries at the beginning of the video, you should be able to go to it via your browser at the uh, whatever address you gave it for the RMM, uh, which is your front end. So in my scenario, because I gave it RMM .hawk data services hawkdata.services this is the page i am greeted with and let's go ahead and just put in our credentials it's gonna ask you for the two-factor token which you enrolled earlier and you are going to be logged in with the latest version of tactical rmm which at the time of making this video is 0 0.20 and from here on, obviously, you can go into your settings, you can deploy agents, uh, you can uh, manage your settings, automation, you can access the tools, which is uh, bulk commands, patch management, server maintenance, so on and so forth. Um, again, my opinion is that for what the stage where this is at, it is a fairly complete open source solution. I like it. It's for what I wanted to do. It works fantastic and like it's definitely gonna be a little bit of uh, getting used to for the more in-depth stuff there is things that you guys should definitely get used to but once you deploy a agent it actually works pretty good uh, the commands are fantastic everything works the way it should I I have no complaints with it but at the end of the day um, each user's use case scenario varies. So please note that your mileage may vary. Thank you so much for tuning in to this deployment guide for uh, Tactical RMM. Even though I did a small mistake, it did end up working out in the end of the day. Uh, just keep in mind that, like I said, depending on the use case scenario, your mileage may vary just a little bit. So keep that in mind and uh, have fun with tactical. Thank you so very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.